Welcome to the Adobe Sanky Kal. This is CS Sankal Kanstia. Welcoming each one of you in this full English revision of AFM. Yes, guys. Starting today with portfolio management, but let me tell you, over a period of time, I will be my best. Uh, you know, try will be to revise all the chapters before your examinations of AFM. And yes, it is going to be very useful because I want that this time this subject AFM should ensure that it will be a game changer for you in ensuring that the name chartered accountant comes before your name. So a lot of students, especially down south, Tamil Nadu, Aplerke, uh, Kerala, Karnataka, Andhra, Andhra Pradesh, Telangana, everywhere. So. they requested that sir please make lectures in full english and definitely obliging it definitely ensuring that they get their due as well so here we start with this first few things that i would want to tell you so so few points to be discussed first is please ensure that you are there on the telegram channel for a simple reason that the notes probably will be uploaded there and the mcq free mcq sessions are also conducted by me there so you can just join this channel right afm and scpf by ca sankalp kanshya this is this is our channel then magic book my suggestion will always be yes if if possible do purchase it because especially for the last 1.5 days that is the book which is going to help you revise all the theory formulas practical questions and concepts plus if i am making all the videos and putting it on youtube i will obviously be referring the magic book i'll show you how it looks so it will become all the more useful to you youtube stay subscribed and click the bell icon why because if any notification comes you should be aware of that like i put the whole icai bos mcq pdf on my channel so you can refer that also right and in case you are looking for anything else from my end please do share it in the comment box that is open for you that will really be helpful in understanding what is your requirement so please follow these guidelines and hopefully we will make a, a great mark in the upcoming examinations for the subject afm i'll try to teach all of the things logically even in a, a revision session and you'll realize it when you listen to it secondly at times you will feel that distracted you know because the world today is full of distractions but that's where there is a thin line of difference between discipline and regret choice is always yours so please ensure that you are disciplined you are consistent listening regularly to the sessions and listening till the end right yes if suppose the session is of 1 and 1/2 hour you may divide the session into two parts 45 minutes now 45 minutes later but select a time period ensure that you are listening to it at least listen it two to three times so that it gets settled in your head and definitely it will be helpful in case you have any friends you can share it with them else also so that it will be useful all right guys so on that note i think we are now all set to begin the journey of uh the revisions and what better chapter than one of my favorite portfolio management so now using this chapter what i am going to do is going to discuss all the formulas because we all know that this is a formula driven chapter so it could be a formula related to average expected return risk portfolio risk covariance correlation minimum variance portfolio uh, efficient frontier capm beta sharpe apt all of this will be discussed in detail i'll try to use the examples wherever possible so that it is there in your head and as i told you at least if two to three times you will listen to it it will be very very helpful to you all right guys so on that note let's begin the journey of our revision sessions based on your positive feedback i am obviously going to take it forward in the best manner possible so do like the video if if you are really happy with the things that are going on as regards full english is concerned all right and definitely as the video is over do share your comments as to how did you like the whole session and yes let's let's begin the session on that positive note yes so all the concepts will be covered through the magic book revision session for you all 
and here we start now very important topic for sure expect at least 10 to 14 marks from this chapter and a few questions here and there on the mcq front as well Chalo, we will start now with the quick fire revision and yes our focus is concepts and formula so the first formula that we are going to focus is based on the return now tell me what is a return so i told you all be it any asset in the world there are going to be only two type of returns from any asset one is going to be a regular income that you are going to earn and the other is going to be the change in value or the value appreciation or depreciation the value appreciation or depreciation is given by p1 minus p0 as we can see here and the other is called as the dividend interest income it could be a uh, uh, rent from a real estate property could be anything so two incomes that we are going to get two returns that we are going to get from any investment one is capital appreciation and the other is going to be regular income from the assets or that we have invested in equity shares the value changes and the dividend received so one regular income and the value changes capital appreciation depreciation so p1 minus p0 is the capital appreciation part plus dividend or interest income or any other regular income that we are going to get from any asset is the other part divided by p0 what is p0 guys the original investment that we have done are we clear with the returns formula p1 minus p0 plus regular income upon p0 is my return got it done now here we have two kind of returns one is called as the average return and the other is called as the expected return the average return is based on the past data and the expected return is based on the future data now what is the average return it is based on past data so say for example x bar is equal to sum of past returns divided by number of observations so say if uh, five returns are given to you five years past return is given to you so you will do a sum of that divide by the number which is five and you will get the average return but in case of expected return you are expecting so it is based on future and whenever things are in future you will have something called as a probability you will have something called as a probability so here probability will be used so all the returns multiply by the probability of that return is what we have called as the average return based on future so summation of a the returns for say three years or three periods into the probability which will be given will become your based on future so we have two returns based on past based on future what is based on past average so total all the last five years return divided by number of observations and the other based on future in that the return multiplied by probability will give me my expected return i hope we are very very clear with this so so far if if uh, i have to say we have done three formulas i'll just quickly write it for you i'll keep on writing little little so that all of us are on the same page and if, if possible you also keep a pen and paper ready you also keep on writing with me i'll just write it in short so what is return formula it will be p1 minus p0 plus a regular income this regular income could be in the form of a dividend or a rental or etc divide by p0 divide by p0 this return is divided so i'll rather say it like this this return is divided into two parts one based on past and the other based on future the one which is based on past is called as average return and the one based on future is called as the expected return the one based on past will be called as say a, a bar and that will be summation of all years return so summation of all years return upon n and based on future will be summation of say whatever is the return into probability and its summation are we clear yes sir we are clear moving on to the next part now the yes the return part is done now let's focus on the risk part what is risk risk is basically the deviation from the average or expected return so i am expecting a particular average return if 
I do not get that much return. That can I say is a risk. Now for people, risk is only negative. It's It could be a positive risk also. It could be a negative risk also. Let me give you an example. So you are expecting 70 marks in uh, AFM and you secure 65 marks. So it became a negative risk. Oh, my average may go for a toss. At the same time, you are expecting 70, but you may also secure 80 marks. That's a positive risk that has worked for you. Are we clear? So now risk has also two parts based on past and the other is based on future, based on, so based on past and again based on future. So the risk is denoted by two terms. One is variance and the other is standard deviation. Well, the real risk is standard deviation, but still we will have to first calculate variance and then calculate standard deviation. So why? So for that, you will have to read the SK info, which I will do it for you. Don't worry. Now, based on past the variance, what is variance? Deviation from the average return. So deviation of my return from the average return. So A minus A bar upon N. So ideally I told you that we need what we need is standard deviation. So why have we done the square here for a simple reason because see here if a minus a bar if a minus a bar is taken and for five years the data is given. So a a minus a bar for one year a minus a bar for two years. So a one minus a bar first year a two minus a bar second year a three minus a bar third year a four minus a bar fourth year a five minus a bar uh, fifth year. The summation of this will always be zero. Why? Because you are taking A bar. A bar is what? It is an average. Now, if you are taking an average, so obviously some part of it will be positive, some part of it will be negative. Eventually, the whole will become zero. So, summation of A minus A bar will always result in zero. So, will the risk always be zero? The answer is no. So, that is the reason. What we will do is, we will do A minus A bar the whole square. We will do a summation of that and then divide it by n. So this is what how it works. A minus A bar, the whole square. Summation of that. Now, once you do the square, it will not become 0. So A minus A bar, the whole square upon uh, A minus A bar, the whole square summation upon n number of observations. But again, I told you, we don't need a square. We just need A minus A bar. So that is where we will do the square root of variance and that is called as the standard deviation. So a minus a bar the whole square will give me variance. Root of that will give me standard deviation which is my real risk. So you understood why are we doing the square? So that mathematically summation of a minus a bar becomes zero will always it be a zero risk? Obviously not and that's the reason we do the square. I hope we are clear. Then it is the other part which is based on future. So here again, we will have to follow the suit. So what we will do is variance. First we will find out. So A minus A bar, the whole square will happen here also. Multiply by probability. So summation of A minus A bar, the whole square multiply by probability and then standard deviation will also be the root. So A minus A bar the whole square into probability and then the whole root will give you the standard deviation. Use data in totality for correct calculation. So we should use the whatever data is there in totality we will use so that we get the correct this and usually our students have a question that sir how many decimals we have to take usually ICI takes two decimals so that should be okay in case of future based returns remember first calculate a minus a bar square into p and I think it's missed then do the summation then do the summation so first we will do a minus a bar square into probability. So, a minus a bar square into probability. A, a1 minus a bar into square into probability. a2 minus a bar square into probability. All of that, then we will do the summation. Gotcha, everybody. So, that's how my risk also works. So, here, let's quickly write down the formula for risk as well. Yeah? What say, guys? I hope you guys are understanding. Please, please keep on telling me. Revision. So, it has to be fast, but it should also be understandable. Are you understanding? So, one risk is based on average return and the other, the risk is based on future return. When I say risk is based on average return, it is A minus A bar the whole square. Why do I do the whole square? So that 
my summation of it is not zero this summation i will do and this basically is called as variance this ladies and gentlemen is called as variance are we clear everybody and at the same time and at the same time if i have to calculate the standard deviation it will be summation a minus a bar the whole square i will write it as it is summation i will do upon n and we will just do a root out here when i speak of the future so this is risk based on average i'll write average risk not return and future risk again variance will be summation a minus a bar the whole square into probability and your standard deviation will be summation a minus a bar the whole square into probability are we clear everybody so with this we also complete the risk part of the portfolio uh, of the uh, security now from individual security see this all of this was being done for individual security all of this was being done for individual security from individual security we will now move on to the portfolio risk and return so now we have understood it from the point of view of a so far we have understood it from the point of view of an individual security we will now try to calculate for the portfolio let's continue now portfolio return so when i say portfolio can i say it will be more than one securities so what we will do is we will see the weight of that security in my portfolio so i will see the weight of every security in my portfolio and then multiply it by the average or expected return as the case may be so say for example here we have weight of a into return of a again i'm telling you this what i've written is a bar which is my average return or it is my expected return. So keep that in mind. So weight of A into average return of A plus weight of B. Now because there are more than one securities, we will have to take the weight and then check its weight. So that will give me my portfolio return and the other is portfolio risk. Now ideally, what will be the portfolio risk? Can I say it will be the root of weight of A into uh, variance of A plus weight of B into variance of B. Or standard deviation of weight of A into standard deviation of A plus weight of B into standard deviation of B because that's a risk. But how have we done it so far? Can I say we have calculated it through the variance and then did the square root. So this is what we will continue here as well. Instead of writing weight of A into standard deviation of A, we will write weight square A multiplied by variance of A plus weight square B multiplied by variance of B and then we will do the root of the same and finally we will get the standard deviation. Are we clear everybody? And that will be the standard deviation of the portfolio. So first we will use the variance thing, do the whole root, variance thing, do the whole root and then we will get the standard deviation plus now, there is a very important concept here and that concept is called as the joint risk between the two securities in the portfolio. So, if there is a joint risk, we denote joint risk in the form of covariance AB. So, variance of A and B plus variance of A and B called as two covariance AB again multiply by their respective weights so that we know internally how much is their uh, weights and they are variance with each other. So finally, I will get two formulas, one for portfolio risk and one for portfolio return. So at portfolio level, if I have to write the return, guys pay attention, I will write portfolio return is equal to, hello, it will be weight of A into return of A plus weight of B into return of b so this is what my portfolio consists of and that's what i've written and the other is called as the portfolio risk right now portfolio risk ideally is standard deviation of the portfolio standard deviation is will be weight of a into standard deviation of a but how have we done it? Can I say we have taken it to the variance level and then done the square root? So we will take it to the variance level. We will take it to the variance level and then we will do the square root. Now, ideally, this is where it should have ended. But 
there are two securities they are internally risky with each other as well so here we will say that risk that joint risk is represented by covariance guys that joint risk is represented by covariance which i have already explained to you in in the detailed lectures so that joint risk of covariance will be 2 into covariance ab but obviously their internal weights will determine their internal weights will determine their internal co risk as well so two covariance into weight of a into weight of b are we clear everybody Kacha, please tell me yes so portfolio return is also done portfolio risk is also done with a writing now the immediate question will be sir what is the formula for covariance so chalo, let's now get into the details of covariance Covariance, what is it? It indicates the joint risk, direction of the movement of the securities in the portfolio. So, it tells us that one risk, one portfolio is going up, the other may go down. So, what is their joint risk? It is negative. One is going up, other is going up. One is going down, it is going down. Both, they have a positive covariance. If one is going down, other is going up, they have a negative covariance. If they go opposite and if they are not concerned with each other's movement, it is called as a zero covariance. So, positive covariance indicates security is, indicates security is moving in same direction, up together or down together. Say DLF and Ambuja Cements. DLF is infrastructure company. The more infrastructure we will do, the more cement will be required. So Ambuja and DLF are kind of having a positive covariance. Negative covariance, one will go up, the other will go down. Indicate security is moving in opposite direction, one up, other down and vice versa. Probably your Axis Bank and Wipro, here you can take the example of a foreign exchange money and then you will realize how it works. And the other is zero covariance, no covariance between the two securities, Asian Paints and Airtel they have no connection one is a telecommunication company one is like a, a paints company or fmcg company they have no connection with each other at all now when we calculate the covariance it will be in the range of negative infinity to positive infinity it can go anywhere so this covariance just tells the direction it does not tell the extent it just tells the direction then who will tell the extent for that we will move on to the next page and that extent is called by the correlation coefficient that extent basically is called as by, called by the correlation coefficient which we will do later on but i'm just telling you that this covariance is only going to tell you what it is going to tell you the direction either minus or plus if it is minus negative covariance one up other down if it is positive covariance both up both down are we clear everybody now the last part of covariance is sir how to calculate so we need so what are we calculating the joint risk of two securities so what are the two securities a and b what is their joint risk a their joint risk one of securities risk is a minus a bar the others risk is b minus b bar right now so far what we used to do we used to do a minus a bar square and then we used to do the root this square was done because otherwise it will become zero this root was done to this root was done to nullify the effect of square now here the two securities are that two securities risk are being examined so here we will not do the square we will directly say summation a minus a bar b minus b bar their summation upon n and that is what my correlation will uh covariance will look like and the other and the on the other other hand the same thing but multiply by probability so here we have say summation a minus a bar uh, b minus b bar into probability and their summation will give me my future data covariance are we clear everybody so here we will say if i have to calculate the formula for covariance guys what will it be one based on past which is my average so i will say summation a minus a bar and b minus b bar upon n right so risk between the two securities risk is deviation from the average and two securities multiply and the other and the other is based on future which will be based on probability so it will be summation a minus a bar b minus b bar into probability 
kacha everybody so whenever you calculate first you will calculate a minus a bar b minus b bar p multiply all of them and then they are summation do you know how to calculate a bar in case of probability it will be a into probability summation do you know how to calculate b bar here yeah summation of b upon n kacha everybody so that brings me to the conclusion of covariance and my covariance just tells me the direction whether it is minus or plus or zero now the exact extent will be given by correlation coefficient which tells that it will be between minus 1 to plus 1 if it is minus 1 it means that there is 100% diversification so if one goes up you don't have to worry other will go down or if you the other goes down you don't have to worry the other will go up because there is a minus 1 correlation called as perfectly negatively correlated which we will be doing here perfectly negatively correlated okay so minus 1 and the other is plus 1 plus 1 means zero diversification see what is diversification diversification tells you that the suppose if there are three companies one is in telecommunication one is in say uh, cement uh, the other third one is into say some other sector say fmcg so there are three companies diversify not connected so if one goes up the other may you know go up a little may come down a little they are diversified but in case of plus one it is like the same sector everything is same axis bank and say hdfc bank will have a positive one correlation because if any news comes relation in relation to the banks both will go up or both will go down there is no diversification at all are we clear everybody guys so correlation coefficient tells the exact direction minus 1 to plus 1 if it is minus 1 fully diversified if it is plus 1 zero diversified now let's see how the formula works as regards r is concerned which represents correlation coefficient so r a b guys r a b is equal to covariance of a b upon standard deviation of a multiplied by standard deviation of b and covariance ab can then from this formula be derived that it is rab into standard deviation of a into standard deviation of b hey samjh gaye everybody so what is it it is covariance ab upon standard deviation a into standard deviation b and that is your correlation coefficient correlation coefficient of a security gotcha everybody of a portfolio got it everybody done so if i have to write here so i will write here correlation coefficient represented by r what is r it is covariance ab upon standard deviation a multiplied by standard deviation b i am clear sir now connection between correlation covariance so i told you one shows the extent the other shows the exact direction are we clear now remember try to remember the formula for portfolio risk in that we had written two covariance ab instead of covariance now i can denote it in the form of r ab into standard deviation of a into standard deviation of b so this covariance ab can be can be substituted by rab into standard deviation a standard deviation of b and that gives us another formula for portfolio risk if if directly my correlation coefficient is not given are we clear everybody done now let's dig deep into this correlation coefficient let's see okay so there are three types of uh, there are three types of correlation which is there perfectly positive correlation so three types of uh, correlation coefficient one is perfectly positive which is represented as plus one securities move in the same direction and same rate very high risk because chalo both are going up that's okay but if one goes down the other also goes down my whole portfolio will crash that's the reason it is said it is good to diversify but not over diversify like having a portfolio negatively correlated which is minus one and then is so securities move in opposite direction and same rate is perfectly negatively correlated and zero correlation we all know no correlation between the two securities now there are shortcut formulas which we have evolved 
<clears throat> if it is a perfectly positive correlated market so if the question says that there is perfect co positive correlation between the securities calculate the risk of portfolio here is the first shortcut formula if r is equal to plus 1 then portfolio risk can be calculated as weight of a into standard deviation of a plus weight of b into standard deviation of b total risk adds up when r is equal to minus 1 so if it is minus 1 then in that case it will become instead of plus it will become minus so weight of a into standard deviation of a minus weight of b into standard deviation of b and if r is 0 then in that case weight of a square into variance of a plus weight of b square into variance of b and if that happens r is equal to 0 then you have to use the risk formula for that got it everybody so uh, perfect positive correlation negative correlation and 0 or no correlation if it's perfect positive correlation both may go up both may go down negative one goes up the other goes down got it guys so risk formula if perfectly positively correlated when r is equal to plus one guys when r is equal to plus one so it will be w a sigma a plus w b sigma b otherwise w a w b uh, w a sigma a minus w b sigma b and r is equal to 0, w a square, sigma square, plus w b square, sigma square. I hope we are clear. And when there are more than two securities, then use the formula a cube, uh, a square, sorry, plus b square, plus c square, plus 2ab, uh, plus 2bc, plus 2ac, if there are more than two securities. Just few points for you. The total risk of a portfolio can never exceed the risk of a stock with highest risk in the portfolio, but obvious. So, the total risk will overall go down if there are diversification in the portfolio. All right. Risk is lowest when correlation between security is perfectly negative. That I have already told you. So, these are just general points you can go through. Now, with this, we complete the concept of we complete the concept of correlation coefficient. I hope we are very, very clear. So, next in line is called as the minimum variance portfolio. So, what is minimum variance portfolio? I will tell you. <clears throat> so, here it is. Minimum variance portfolio. Now, suppose if I have my parents and my parents don't want to take any risk, but I want them to invest in securities. So, I will create a minimum variance portfolio for them. Minimum variance portfolio tells that we should create the portfolio in such a way that one, they will be perfectly negative correlated and their weights will be at MVP. What is MVP? Minimum variance portfolio. So, we will now learn to calculate the weights in such a way that it results in minimum variance. It results in minimum variance here. To reduce the portfolio risk to the lowest level, what matters is also the combination weights of securities giving rise to the concept of MVP, which is minimum variance portfolio. MVP identifies the combination weight of securities in a portfolio, which together has lowest risk for a given expected return. MVP, lowest risk, highest return if the below weights are taken. I will not say highest return, but a decent return. But we everything in terms of risk will be lowest. But that will depend if you take the weights as here. What is the formula for weights? Let's write it down. Let's understand. It is variance of B. Now, if I am calculating the weight of security A, I will start with variance of B minus covariance AB. Upon Variance of A plus variance of B minus 2 covariance AB, where WA plus WB is equal to 1 and WB is equal to 1 minus WA. What is WA? Weight of A. What is WB? Weight of B. Total is equal to 1. And the obviously 1 we have got, the other will be 1 minus the remainder. So, MVP, if I have to calculate the formula for MVP, can I write it down? Yes, MVP tells us the weights. So, say for example, weights of A, weights of A will be what? It will be a uh, uh, standard deviation of 
B. See, remember, huh? When we have weight of A when we are calculating, we will come here with B. Minus covariance AB upon variance of A, variance of B minus 2 covariance AB. Minus 2 covariance AB. Are we clear, everybody? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Variance of A, variance of B minus 2 covariance AB. And here, uh, variance of B minus covariance AB. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Yes, sir. Done. So, this is about my minimum variance portfolio. Then we come to the next concept called as the mean variance or dominance principle. If there are many securities having same return but different risk, find out the security with the lowest risk and select that and reject all other. If we can see here, we have A, B, C, D, E, F. And if we can see here, the return is same for all the securities. We will select the one with the lowest risk. We will select that and by default, all other securities will be rejected. We may also have a vice versa situation. We may also have a vice versa situation. Meaning, we have the same risk we have the same risk but different returns. In that select the one which has the highest return. Hello. In that select the, so see same risk. In which select the highest return, all others will be rejected. This is called as basically the dominance principle. This is basically called as the dominance principle. Are we clear everybody? So we have to find. If there are many securities of which one security, many securities having same return, but one of them lowest risk, others all rejected because it is dominating the others. Other, if same risk, highest return, select that because it is dominating the others. Got it, everybody? Done, sir. Now, finally, if we have different risk and return combination. Then use the con formula of coefficient variation, which is risk upon return or standard deviation upon mean. Right? So, if the, you know, returns are different, risk is different, then in that case, for everything, we have to calculate the risk return ratio. Lower, the better. So, the, this is the lowest. Lower, the better. Why? Because, see, risk is in the numerator. So, we want the risk to be lower. So, whatever is in the numerator, you always want it the decision will go accordingly. If it was return upon risk, we will say higher the better because in numerator return is there. We want the return to be higher. But your risk is there. So, risk we always want to be lower. So, lower the better. Are we clear everybody? Gotcha. Yes, sir. Next is called as the capital asset pricing model. Yeah. Now, whatever that we did till now was the theory of Mr. Harry Markowitz, a person given the Nobel Prize. The Harry Markowitz principle is done here. From your taking clues, William Sharpe developed something called as the CAPM model or capital asset pricing model. He said that the total risk is actually divided into two parts. One systematic risk and the other unsystematic risk. One, systematic risk and the other, unsystematic risk. What is systematic risk? Something which cannot be diversified. Something which is not in your hands or my hands or anybody's hands. Something which is highly market specific. And what is unsystematic risk? Which is in the hands of the company. Which is avoidable. Which is diversifiable. So, that is basic fundamental difference between the non-diversify or systematic risk and the diversify or the unsystematic risk. Let's continue. Now, the non-diversify or the systematic risk, as I told you, is the market-specific risk, which is not in anybody's hands, risk that affects the entire market, not just a particular stock or industry. Market risk like interest, purchasing power risk, in, uh, you know, inflation, war, Global factors, monetary policy, RBI may come up with a monetary policy that they are increasing the uh, interest rate by 25-50 basis points. The Reliance, HDFC, 
DMART, anybody, Larsen and Tubro, everybody will be affected and it is not in hands of anybody. It is, hand in the, it is in the hands of the government which nobody can control. Non-diversifiable, systematic, market-specific risk. And the other is diversifiable, unsystematic risk. Unsyst uh, uh, uncertainty inherent that a company may have. It could be an internal risk, external risk. It could be a credit risk, currency risk. So, all of this comes here. So, it arises due to companies internal factors, financial position, business strategies, scams within the company. All of that is unsystematic risk or diversifiable in the hands of the specific company. Got it everybody? Yes sir. So, that basically is called as diversifiable unsystematic risk. This risk affects directly to the to the particular company only and may not have direct impair, impact on its peers or the industry. So, here it affects directly to the company. Now, if Satyam company has done a scam, it will not affect the other companies. It will just affect the Satyam company. Unsystematic risk. Or if there is a sales strategy used by Jio, penetration policy, it is just for Reliance Jio. Unsystematic risk, specific to the company. Right? But in, in, in case of the systematic risk, it affects every company in the particular sector, industry or economy. Therefore, systematic risk is unavoidable, cannot be removed. But unsystematic risk is avoidable. Invest in good companies. Invest in companies which has a good management and good fundamentals and good track record. Great. So, they are avoidable and therefore can be protected or insured or diversified in a comprehensive portfolio by increasing number of securities. Are we clear everybody? Now, based on this CAPM model. Hello. Based on this CAPM model, he came out with the formula of expected return or required return or cost of equity. So, now as an investor in any company, I want two basic things. One is the risk-free return because I am taking a risk by investing in your company. So, at least risk-free return. So, I want means I want. Plus, I want the market return as well. So, suppose if market is earning 12%, risk-free return is for, uh, say 8%. So, I want additionally, additionally, in so 1, 8% I want plus additionally this 4% is also what I am looking for. But this is multiplied by a most crucial factor called as beta. Beta is basically telling us that see, from every company, you will require a different kind of return. Say from a very good company like a Larson and, Larson and Tubro. You will not require very high returns. You will require average returns and you know. See, end of the day, return is based on risk. You know Larsen & Dubrow is a very good company. So, the risk of investing in a Larsen & Dubrow is very low. If the risk of investing in that is low, my return expectations will also be low. But if, say, compare a company like a Vodafone Idea, whose shares are very volatile, whose management is very frickle and it has a liability of 10,000 crores, 50,000 crores from the government of India, it can, you know, it's very risky. So, obviously, if it is more risky, I will, my expectation of return will be very high as far as Vodafone idea is concerned. That is represented by something called as beta. So, higher the beta, higher is the volatility of the stock of that particular, with that, uh, of that stock, with that of the market. Huh. So, a uh, beta of Larsen and Tubro will be one. Sensitivity. What is beta? Sensitivity of the market with that of our particular security. Or sensitivity of our security with that of the market. So, I know when market moves a little up, LNT will also move a little up. If market moves a little down, LNT will also move a little down. So, they are almost in conjunction and hence the, 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 the investor is secured, doesn't need something very high in terms of return from these companies who have a, you know, beta similar to the market. But take an example of a Vodafone idea. If market goes down by one point, 100 points, the share of Vodafone idea will probably fall three times than that of the market. If this goes down by 1%, Vodafone idea may fall down by 3%. If there is some good news, a market may go up by 2%. This Vodafone idea share may go up by say 5%. So, this beta represents the volatility. 
of your stock with that of the market and that basically determines your expected return right so rm when i am saying market the market basically is divided into two parts one is called as a bombay stock exchange and the other is called as a national stock exchange bombay stock exchange is a representative of sensex and represents top 30 listed companies of bsc whereas national stock exchange is a representative of national 50 top 50 companies in the market top 50 listed, com listed companies of nse are we clear then it's just a representative of entire exchange and all of that is what looks like here in india equivalent of a bse is nasdaq in usa nse nyse in usa sensex is dow jones and nifty is like snp standard and poor index anyways uh, just a idea to let you know now what is beta beta is a measure of systematic risk measures the sensitivity of stock with respect to the market calculates the impact of market now if beta is plus one rise and fall of stock will be equal to that of the market if beta is equal to two it means when market increases by one percent security will increase by one percent into two which is two percent same way if beta is more than one it means it is a highly risky highly volatile stock like that of Vodafone idea just I, I just told you so rise and fall will be if it is sorry it is high will be higher than that of the market both rise and fall again I am telling you if beta is less than one it is called as a conservative stock if beta is zero no impact on the market like your cash cash kept at home has no relation with whatever is going in the market or a fixed deposit has no relation with whatever is going in the stock market and then if beta is negative it means if market goes up your uh, particular share will go down for example gold has a negative beta usually observe when the equity market is going up gold is going down so that basically explains you about the negative beta are we clear everybody gotcha yes sir gotcha generally negative beta means opposite or inverse movement within the market gold companies defense sector companies are all in this negative beta even again with defense market when the market goes down suppose if there is a war between our country and some other country and in case of war all companies will go down defense sector will go up so market comprise of all other companies will eventually go down but defense sector will go up negative beta are you clear everybody now as per capm we have given you the final return which is rf plus hello it is rf plus beta of that particular security into rm minus rf i hope we are clear market return if it is not given in such situation if rm is not given then we can take the average return of all securities in the question assuming all those securities make the market if rm is not given and there are four other securities which is given whose say return is given we will find their average and that will be representative of the market i hope we are clear let's move on to calculate the beta by using the formulas okay now that we have understood beta let's try and understand in detail formulas for beta the first formula is three main formulas are there i'll teach you all. first is beta what is beta it is the volatility of our one share with that of the market so change in security return upon change in market return gotcha everybody change in security return upon change in market return so infosys is running at 500 and market is at 1200 market is now goes up by 600 and infosys goes up by 300 again market goes up by 300 infosys goes up by 150 it means that the beta of infosys is 0.5 a uh, one point change in market results into 0 0.5 change in infi giving us a 0 0.5 percent or uh, 0 0.5 beta are we clear everybody done now there are other formulas as well so what is beta it basically represents the joint risk between the securities and the market and joint risk is represented by covariance uh, hello right covariance of security and market upon covariance of the market easy peasy formula so what is the covariance of security security minus security bar 
into market minus market bar upon variance of the market. This can further be represented as so covariance security market upon variance of market can also be represented as like this. What is it? It is correlation coefficient of securities with the market into standard deviation of security, standard deviation of market upon variance of the market. Now, obviously, market, market cancels and we will finally have the formula for covariance, which will be RSM into S. So, I will just write it here for you. Uh, RSM which is correlation coefficient of securities with the market into variance of, oh sorry, standard deviation of security upon variance of market. Got it, guys? So, this can also be an alternative formula. So, always remember, beta 1, change in security, change in market return, change in security return upon change in market return, then covariance. Covariance, why? Because it is a joint risk between security and the market. So, security minus security bar, market minus market bar, summation upon market square because end of the day it is the market that we are comparing ourselves with got it guys done so this year rab uh, covariance ab upon ab is used and covariance of sm upon variance of sm is also what we can write so i hope we are very very clear then there is a formula based on regression analysis is hardly used we can just uh, go through this sigma x uh, summation of xy minus n x bar y bar upon summation x square minus n x bar square. So, this is how it works. Then comes portfolio beta. What is portfolio beta? So, it is beta of A into weight of A. Very, very important formula this. Beta of a security. So, what is the portfolio, uh, portfolio beta means? Howsoever securities are there, we will first individually find them, find their beta. So, there are three securities A, B and N. Security A, it's beta. Security B, it's beta. Security N, it's beta. And then the weight of those securities in our portfolio. So, weight of security A in our portfolio multiplied by beta. Weight of security B in our portfolio multiplied by beta of B. Weight of security N into beta of N. Gotcha, everybody. So, weight of security A in the portfolio B and multiply by beta of security A in the portfolio will give us this. Okay. How do you calculate the weight? We all know. Well, it is the total market value of investment of that particular asset upon market value of the portfolio. Now, decision based on CAPM, this is again similar to something that you are going to do in valuation of security as well. Pay attention. CAPM return, which is the expected return or the return that the investor is looking for. This basically is like the required return. Hello. Please write here the required return. So, my required return is greater than my expected return. Will I be happy or will I be sad? So, say my expected return was, let's take an example. Sorry. Let's take an example. My expected return, say, is 10%. And my CAPM return is 8%. So, CAPM return is basically my required return. As I told you, it is my required return, my suggestion. Please write it there. So, if my required return is 8%, I think I have written otherwise. So, this will be 12. This will be 12%. So, if I have got a return of say 12 percent but my expectation of return were 10 percent can i say i am getting better from the from my security i will sell it on the profit tata bye bye if it is other way around say here i am expecting a return of say eight percent or let's say ten percent and my required return was say eight percent so here my Required return was 8. I got 10% return. Very good. I will buy such kind of share. But here my required return was 12. But I got only 10% return. I will say, sorry, I don't want your share. I will sell it. Because my required return was 12. You were able to give me only 10%. So it's not good. I will sell your share. You are not able to meet my requirements. In the first case. In the second case, 
my required return was 8 but you have given me 10 percent return very good you have met my requirements i will buy your security are we clear everybody and if it is equal you can just hold it done crpm return need to be calculated by using the formula obviously we know rf plus beta into rm minus rf are we clear so with this we complete the concept of beta as well moving on moving on to the sharpe index model now my suggestion will will come here at the end sorry okay sharpe index model sorry i thought sharpe optimization sharpe index model again very important now pay attention the given formula by sharpe of required return is based on characteristic line regression which is given by the formula y is equal to a plus bx do you remember y is like your return of security required return a is like is like your intercept risk free plus beta is like your slope plus x is your like your rm minus rm now what the sharpe index model says is see we know that one part of return is your systematic return which we can see this see the shareholder is compensated by a company for taking systematic risk so here he has taken the systematic risk and we are going to compensate him by giving him a return which is rf plus beta into rm minus rm but can i say there is also a unsystematic risk involved by default in every share it could be a minuscule number but that is represented here as this that is represented here as this are we clear everybody so this is your sharpe index model this is your sharpe index model which says that there is some element of unsystematic risk which should also be taken care of which should also be taken care of below is the concept of sharpe index model which says total risk is systematic risk plus unsystematic risk systematic risk we know is the combination of beta with the market but unsystematic risk little also is there which is called which is called as residual error again i am telling you it is called as residual error it is called as standard error it is called as error it is called as residual variance whatever name you want to give you can give it so total risk from the x from the angle of sharpe index model is systematic plus unsystematic systematic obviously we know beta combination with the market variance so beta variance uh, with the market variance plus the error the standard error so here we will write if you want we, if just for a remembrance that sharpe index model sim will be two things systematic risk plus unsystematic risk systematic risk is beta with the market so beta security market plus unsystematic risk which is your standard error which is your standard error i hope we are clear now continuing so unsystematic risk can also be written as guys this is your total risk which is systematic risk plus unsystematic risk can i write unsystematic risk as total risk minus systematic risk we know total risk is standard deviation minus we know systematic risk is beta square into market square we will be left with the balancing figure as your unsystematic risk guys please understand this very very properly so total risk uh, unsystematic risk will be yeah uh you just put a bracket here yeah unsystematic risk will be security risk which is represented by variance minus beta into market variance beta variance of security into market variance that will be your systematic risk total risk sigma square s are we clear everybody gotcha done and finally at portfolio uh, level we will use the same formula but for systematic risk instead of security at portfolio level it will be beta a uh, portfolio of beta variance of that into market variance portfolio beta variance 
into market variance plus weight of A into unsystematic risk of A plus weight of B into unsystematic risk of B, weight of N into unsystematic risk of N. This will be given in the question. In question, if unsystematic risk is not given, then it will be calculated as variance of security as per Markowitz portfolio theory minus systematic risk. Minus unsystematic risk. But usually at portfolio level, what they do is this. They will give you the beta of portfolio market will remain as it is and then you can calculate the unsystematic risk because they will give you what weight of a hello it is weight of a into they will give you the residual error which is the unsystematic risk so they will give you the unsystematic risk or the residual error of a as well will be given Either of that, either they will give that unsystematic risk or they will give it in the form of say residual error. Got it guys? Isn't it total variance as we are squaring? Yes, so we are taking total variance and we are taking the square part, uh, Arun, right? So see here, look here, we are taking the square part here. We are taking the square part here because everything is in square. We are taking the square part here. Everywhere we are taking the square part here. Got it? So that. Okay, so you are telling here, okay, my bad, my bad, yeah. here also it will be square. So, total variance will be square, square. And either this will be given or they will directly give unsystematic risk. Plus, weight of B square into residual error of B square or they will give you unsystematic risk of B square. Acha, everybody? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Done. So, this is about your Sharpe index model. In just one question, they have also given us the coefficient of determination. If they give you, it is systematic risk upon total risk, which will be given in the question. Just directly use the formula. So, system, uh, coefficient of determination, R square, SM, it is systematic risk upon total risk. Continue. Then we come to the multi-factor model, which is also called as the arbitrage pricing theory, which says that there are multiple betas. Or what we can say is there are multiple factors which affect the total expected return from the market. So what is that? First, we want the risk-free return for sure plus say beta of one factor, beta of other factor, beta of third factor. What could be these factors? One, impact of GDP on our share, impact of beta on our share, impact of inflation on our share. So all of those will also be calculated here. So, beta of say GDP, beta or any factor, say inflation factor, GDP factor, overall markets beta of our security. So, all of that will be other, other different, different factors. Multiply by the risk premium. What is the risk premium? Expectation and the actual difference. So, you are expecting that the GDP will grow by 7%. But GDP has grown by 9%. So, can I say the risk premium is positive by 2%? So, if it is positive by 2%, so we will say that the risk premium is positive. Multiply by whatever is the GDP, whatever is the beta or the GDP factor which will be given in the question. Suppose there is the other factor called as inflation, right? Now, in case of inflation, you are expecting the market uh, inflation. In general, you are expecting the inflation to be 10%, but it has worked out to 12%. So, can I say it is a negative inflation? So, we will have a negative beta as well. Are we clear? So, RP will probably be given by a negative percentage and beta. Beta is change of our share with that of inflation. Beta a, a year, beta is, beta is change of our share with that of GDP. So, whatever change in GDP happens, how does our share react will be given by beta 1. If uh, there is any change in inflation, how does our share react? Will be given by beta 2. So, that general correlation is given. Multiply by how much has the actual risk premium been? Risk premium means how much is the changes between the expected and the actual. So, my arbitrage pricing theory, APT, will be beta. So, will be first RF will be on plus beta of A into risk premium of A plus beta of B into risk premium of B. Beta of C 
into risk premium of C. What is A, B, C here? Let's substitute it by say various factors. It could be say a GDP here. To be, uh, it will be a GDP. What is RP? Guys, what is RP? RP is the risk premium. How is it represented? Actual minus expectation. Actual minus expectation is how we represent RP, which is the risk premium into beta of GDP. Then probably it could be a inflation year into RP risk premium of inflation. Then there could be a beta based on it could be any factor. It could be a change in foreign currency or something. Risk premium of foreign currency. This is how you will keep on adding. If there is a negative factor, you will you will reduce the amount. And finally, you will get the APT arbitrage pricing theory. Are we clear, everybody? Gotcha. See here. Beta of gross national product could be inflation, GNP differential, inflation differential. Differential is basically the risk premium. Got it, sir. Done. Okay. Then we move on to the performance evaluation aspect, which is very, very simple. See, performance evaluation of funds, mutual funds can be done in three ways. Sharpe, Trenor, Jensen's. Very easy. Sharpe says that whatever is the return that the portfolio has earned over and above the risk-free return is the real overall return that you have earned. See, risk-free by default, every portfolio has to earn. How much have you earned over and above that risk-free is your real extra return. But that will have to be compared. In case of Sharpe, we are comparing it with the risk or standard deviation of the portfolio. In case of Trenor, we are comparing it with the systematic risk, which is the beta of the portfolio, right? So Sharpe ratio, earning more return than the risk-free. So RP minus RF. But here the comparison is with the risk of the portfolio, standard deviation of portfolio. Or RP minus RF upon beta of portfolio. What is RP again? Portfolio return minus RF upon beta of portfolio. So one is standard deviation of portfolio. Other is beta of portfolio. Gotcha, everybody. And then last we have is Jensen's alpha, which is expected return based on CAPM. Minus actual return. If my expected return or, or what you call as the required return is say 10%, my actual return is 12%, I will say 12 minus 10, 2, positive, very good. If it is other way around, 8 minus 10, 2, negative, very bad. What is Jensen's alpha? Actual return minus required return or expected return as per CAPM. CAPM, RF plus beta into RM minus RF. Are we clear? So, come on, Sharpe, everybody. Chalo, let's write it down. What is the Sharpe? So, it is saying that, see, whatever return your portfolio has earned over and above the risk-free, that we will compare with the variance of the portfolio. Achha, what is a Trenor? Hello, what is Trenor? Whatever return the portfolio has earned over risk-free, that we will compare with the beta of the portfolio. And last, last is my... Jensen's alpha. Jensen's alpha. What is that? It is actual return minus required return as per CAPM. Okay. What is CAPM? It is RF plus beta RM minus RM. Hey, Sanjay Guru, everybody. So, this is what is your Jensen's alpha. So, with this, we complete the performance evaluation as well. Gotcha, everyone. Yes. Okay, next we move on to the concept of market lines. There are two market lines, security market line and characteristic market line. I will make it very simple for you. I have already made it very simple through this. Uh, now, pay attention. Characteristic market line, see the formula. It is required return. See now. There is just one question based on characteristic market line and uh, security market line. So we just have to understand these two formulas and we'll be done. I have taken one question, an example of ICAI where we will have to calculate or where we will have to use both characteristic line and we will have to use the securities market line for sure. So that way this whole concept will be done. 
Now, characteristic market like logically it's systematic risk and rate of return. That's what we uh, show on our graph. But as of now, we are just focused on the formula thing because this is just a revision that we are doing. So now how does this work? So RS expected return of security is equal to alpha plus beta into RM. What is RM? It is the market return. Alpha is what we will have to calculate. Don't worry. This is beta, which we know. RM we know. So see, we know how to calculate RM. Yes. We know how to calculate beta. Yes. We know how to calculate RS. Yes. RS is expected return on security. You used to calculate? No. The first formula x into probability. The first formula is your RS. So RS is equal to alpha. So uh, the security market line, I'm just writing the formula for you all. Security market line is, is RS, which is summation x into probability. The first formula is alpha plus beta into RM, right? So alpha plus beta into RM. Do we know how to calculate the beta? Yes, using CAPM, we will be able to calculate the beta. Do we know how to calculate the RM? It is the market return. Probably it will be given or we will be able to calculate. Alpha probably will be your balancing figure. And in the same breath, in the same breath, we have something called as a SML, called as the security market line. That indicates the expected return at different market risk level. Now, how it is presented? Pay attention here. It is RF, which we know by CAPM, plus beta into market risk premium. And how do you calculate the market risk premium? RM minus RM. So, can I say this is as good as your CAPM thing? So, it is given as, uh, uh, SML It will be given as risk-free plus beta, sorry, uh, risk-free plus beta into, here you have to use the market risk premium, which as a matter of fact will be RM minus RM. Gotcha, everybody. Yes, sir. Gotcha. So that is how your CML and SML will be. Again, I'm telling you, characteristic market line is RS. RS is return on a security, expected return on a security using the probability. Summation of X into probability is equal to alpha balancing figure plus beta into RM, market return, beta, CAPM, SML, your CAPM formula, RF plus beta into market risk premium. Now let's use the formula in the given below question. Expected return on two stocks for a market return is given below. Market return 7%, 25%. Aggressive, defensive, two stocks is what we have. Calculate the betas of the two stocks. Now, we have two stocks, aggressive and defensive. Tell me, how will you calculate the beta of aggressive? So, can I say it is the beta formula is change in security return. Do we know the change in security return? from 4 to 40 upon change in market return from 7 to 25 40 minus 4 upon 25 minus 7 and 2 is the beta for a same way change in security return upon change in market return for d and we will get it for 0 0.5 got it everybody yes sir then we have the second part of the question calculate the expected return of each stock if the market is such an important word equally likely to be 7% or 25%. Equally means the probability is 0 0.5. So they want the expected return of each stock. So they want the RS expected return, RS expected return, RS, right? So this RS, now basically we are calculating, which is your expected return as per the characteristic market line. So what is the it uh, RS? What is it? It is x into probability. Probability is 0 0.5. How do you come to know? Equally likely. What is the x security return? 4, 20, 9, 18. Multiply and we get the RSS 22% and 13.5%. So what is the expected return? Expected return is 22% and 13.5%. Second part is done. Third part. Security market line, if risk-free rate is 7.5 and market return, see this again, is equally likely. Hello, market return is equally likely to be 7% or 25%. So, if market return is equally likely to be 7% or 25%, can I say the market return also can be calculated? Can I say it will be 0 0.5 probability of 7%? 
करेक्ट जीरो पॉइंट फाइव प्रॉबिलिटी ऑफ सेवन परसेंट जीरो पॉइंट फाइव प्रॉबिलिटी ऑफ ट्वेंटी फाइव परसेंट टोटल मार्केट रिटर्न एक्सपेक्टेशन विल बी सिक्सटीन परसेंट वॉट विल बी द मार्केट रिस्क प्रीमियम सिक्सटीन परसेंट माइनस सेवन पॉइंट फाइव विच इज योर रिस्क फ्री रिटर्न विच वर्क आउट टू एट पॉइंट फाइव परसेंट सो रिस्क फ्री विच इज सेवन पॉइंट फाइव रिस्क फ्री विच इज सेवन पॉइंट फाइव प्लस मार्केट रिस्क प्रीमियम विच इज एट पॉइंट फाइव रिस्क फ्री विच इज सेवन पॉइंट फाइव प्लस मार्केट रिस्क प्रीमियम विच इज एट पॉइंट फाइव and that gives me my securities market line why because securities market line is what it is risk free plus beta into market risk premium market risk premium is rm which we calculated uh, as 16 minus risk free 17.5 so 8.5 into beta 8.5 into beta plus rf is giving me rr required return as per securities market line so what is your securities market line now 7.5 plus beta into 8.5 and they have asked for security market line itself always remember when a line is asked the market line is always in the form of a equation characteristic market line or any line is asked then a line is in the form of a equation securities market line rf plus beta into rm minus rf rm we calculated using our uh, logic of market return probability into market return probability into market return we got 16 minus rf 8.5 we got as the market risk premium into beta plus rf rf is my 7.5 got it everybody that is my securities market line always remember securities market line is represented in the form of a equation and then finally they have asked us to calculate the alpha in calculating alpha can i say we will use the help of this characteristic line so first in case of aggressive stock rs we know 22% hello rs we know 22% we have calculated see this rs 22% yes sir absolutely correct is equal to alpha plus beta into 16% so beta where it is see beta we have already calculated as 2 into we have the rm so your rm is 16 so 2 into 16 And twenty two balancing is minus ten percent, and your thirteen point five percent we can see R S is equal to point five is the beta of defensive stock sixteen percent R M is going to remain as it is. We will get alpha of defensive as five point five percent. Got it, everybody? So this is usually what public leave for option. But I hope we have understood the securities market line and the characteristic line which we will use by. Solving the above two formulas, done, sir. Okay. Next, we move on to the concept of investing and borrowing of securities to manage beta, and for that also I have a classic formula which you can use. Again, everybody pay attention. Use this classic formula, and you will be able to solve any question. Asa, just one note which which I skip. Just pay attention here. Note what well, different expectations of market returns are given. Calculate RM based on weighted average of market return. So weight uh, into raw uh, market return of A plus weight of B into market return of B. Here the weight was 0.5, 0.5, and that's how we calculated the market return. Instead of weight, we can also write the probability of A and probability of B. Gotcha, everybody. Yes, sir. Then we have the investment and borrowing of securities to manage beta. always remember that target beta that we want see currently i have a portfolio which has a beta of 1.7 but i want the target beta to be 1.5 or it could be vice versa i have a beta of 1.7 but i want a target beta of 2.2 so it could be any case i would want to increase my target to it i would want to increase my current beta to reach to the target beta or i would want to decrease my beta to reach to the target beta it could be anything for doing all of that one you have the current portfolio into one you have the current portfolio into weight of current portfolio plus now whatever is to be done will be done using the risk free using the risk free element so beta of risk free Into weight of risk free. Tell me what is the beta of risk free? 
security it is always going to be zero we have already discussed while doing beta that the risk free security is not concerned with the market at all so always my target beta will be way beta of current portfolio into weight of current portfolio and plus beta of risk free plus weight of risk free is always going to be zero is always going to be zero now weight of risk free plus weight of current portfolio is one but obvious there are only two things so it is going to be one so we know that weight of risk free will now become one minus weight of current portfolio so this is how simple now i will make it for y'all using this uh, sum see now how it becomes very very simple see one more note if weight of current portfolio is less than one less than hundreds then investment has to be done in risk free asset now for this note, first we will have to solve this question and then we'll be able to understand the note. First, a portfolio manager has following four portfolios in his beta, uh, in his portfolio. Compute the following. If the portfolio is 1.108, so already the beta is given to be 1.108 of this portfolio. If the port, uh, 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 portfolio beta is 1.108, if the PM seeks to reduce the beta to 0 0.8, can I say this is my target beta? So what is my target beta? It is 0 0.8 is equal to weight of current portfolio i don't know into my beta of current portfolio 1.108 plus weight of risk free weight of risk free i don't know but beta of risk free is always zero so by default this becomes zero so now my target beta 0 0.8 is equal to weight into 1.108 i will get the weight of current portfolio which is 72.2 percent if weight of current portfolio is 72.2 percent can i say the remainder which is 28.8 or 27.8 will be that of beta the risk free so 72.2 is weight of current portfolio my risk free will become 27.8 now all i have to do is cross multiplication if 72.2 represents my current portfolio which is of equivalent of 12 lakhs which is equivalent to 12 lakhs how much will be 100 it will be 16 lakh 62050 in this situation i will have to do an investment of 4 lakh 62080 to be invested at risk free rate now this is what the first note says if the weight of current portfolio is less than one in our case it was 72.2 which is 0.722 which is less than one which means that investment has to be done in risk-free asset how much the remaining 27.8 so we will say that 72.2 should be the weight of the current portfolio how much is the current portfolio 12 lakh so if i have to convert it to 100 can i say it should be 16 62 050 means can i say 462 approximately should be bought in so that 27.8 percent will be that risk free 462 and then automatically my uh, target beta will be reduced from 1.108 to target beta of 0 0.8 and and on the other hand if i have to increase the beta hello if i have to increase the beta then again the formula will remain same target beta is weight of risk free beta into beta of risk free plus weight of current portfolio in, into yeah into beta of current portfolio again this will always be zero because beta of risk free is zero we will say weight of current portfolio into 1.108 which is the beta of current portfolio solving this mathematically we will get a uh, weight of current portfolio as 1.083 can I say this is more than one? If this is more than one, the see here, see if weight of current portfolio is more than one. Again, we will do the same equation. So we will say 108.3 represents 12 lakh. So how much is 100? It represents 108033. Uh, 0, 0, so out of 12 lakh, now the portfolio should become of 108033. We will have to borrow at risk-free rate of 91967 in order to increase the beta. We will have to borrow at risk-free rate. Here we will have to introduce risk-free rate in the first case so that our overall beta is reduced. There we will have to borrow. Are we understanding to be borrowed at risk-free rate? Got it? So here 12 lakh is the current portfolio which is representing one point uh 08 1.1083 1 
So can I say if it is represented as 108.3% which is 12 lakh. So can I say 100 will be what? It will be 1108033. Gotcha everybody. Yes sir. So in short I will have to reduce that 91967 from my portfolio. How do I reduce? By taking borrowing risk free rate security. So with this we complete how to manage beta increase or decrease beta or invest or borrow risk free security. Got it everybody? Please confirm. If yes, just go through this again and, and you will get to know all the things in the right perspective. And if you want, you can listen to this thing again. It will be very, very clear. And apply it in any question. I have already applied it in ICI module question 36. You can also try it out. So done. Next, portfolio revision and rebalancing. Portfolio revision and rebalancing. This is again a very important concept. First is buy and hold strategy. Buy and hold strategy says, please invest in equity and forget it. Invest in equity and forget it. Whatever changes happen will be seen at the end. And that is what your buy and hold strategy. No, do nothing policy. You don't have to use any brains. It is a do nothing policy. Now comes the most important and this is constant mix policy. According to me, this is very important. And this is do something policy. So if first you have to decide for a ratio, say you decide that it should be a 50-50 ratio, 50-50 ratio or 1 is to 1 ratio between equity shares and bonds. 1 is to 1 ratio between equity shares and bonds. So now suppose if the share price is 100 and 50,000, 50,000 is to be invested. So we will say out of 50,000 share price is 100. So some, some. Yeah. So, out of this uh, 50,000, 50,000, we will first invest say at 100 level in shares and the remaining in case of bonds. So, here when I say 50,000 divided by 100 share price, so can I say 500 shares? We will start with 500 shares of equity and value of bonds will be 50,000. Over a period of time, the share price falls to 80. Now, 80 into 500, can I say the new value will be 40,000 for shares, 50,000 for value of bonds, total becomes 90,000. We need to ensure 1 is to 1 ratio. So, 90,000 in 1 is to 1 will be 45,000, 45,000. Tell me what will you do? You already have the value of shares as 40,000. You will have to make it to 45,000. So, buy 5,000. And here it will be sell 5,000. So bond you will have to sell. So bond to stock switching. How much of rupees 5,000? Bond to stock switching. How much of rupees 5,000? Are we clear everybody? Again, say now this falls to 60. So now uh, 45,000 we have. So uh, we need to check the say number of shares out here. See here. So... Now, just I'll just show you the calculations, guys. See here, pay attention. 50,000 you had originally. Divide by 100 per share. And it will be 500 shares. Yes, sir. Understood. Sir. Absolutely clear. Now, I have purchased more 5,000 worth of share for 40 rupees. Because now the share price has changed. So, how many shares I would have purchased? So, 5,000 divided by 40. Sorry, divided by 80. The share price is 80. So, divide by 80. So, 5000 divided by 80. Can I say 62.5 shares more I would have purchased? So, in short, I and I have now have 562.5 shares. Now, the share value has gone down to 60 per share. So, uh, 562.5 into 60. Can I say it is 33,750 as such? Yes, sir. Value of debt. Now, it was 50. We had sold worth 5,000. So, it will be added. So, this will become 45,000. So, 33,750 plus 45,000 is equal to 78,750. Guys, is equal to, is equal to 78,750. This will be divided 1 is to 1. So, divide by 2. So, 39,375. 39,375. Now, we will again do the bond to stock switching from 33,750 we need to increase this to 39,375 so minus 33,750 and it will be 5,625 to be added here 
5625 probably yes to be deleted from here gotcha everybody right so 5625 approximately to be added here c78750 is now what the total is 45000 plus 33750 divided into two parts so divided into two parts 78750 divided into two parts Thirty nine three seven five. Probably some calculation error. Yes. So now this year again we will have to do again bond to stock switching. How much of five six two five of five six two five? Some calculation error here, but uh, I've corrected it here, so you can just follow this. Got it? This is called as CRP. Constant ratio policy. What was the constant ratio in our case? 1 is to 1. In the same way, the other reverse may happen. The share price may also increase. If it increases again, then we will have to do stock to bond switching. See this, both examples, stock to bond switching has been done. You can manage it. Now, the last is constant proportion insurance policy, also called as CPIP. Here, the formula is to be taken very seriously multiplier into portfolio value minus floor value and that will tell us what should be the total investment in shares so we will first calculate the portfolio value minus we will be given the floor value so portfolio value is 10 lakh floor value is 10 lakh 50 thousand so can i say 2.5 lakh multiply by 2 the multiplier this This will give us 5 lakhs. This will give us 5 lakhs. Got it everybody? So that is your proportion of investment in equity shares. So what it is? Multiplier into portfolio value minus floor value. What is portfolio value? 10 lakh. What is floor value? 750,000 both are given into into my uh, multiplier which is also given so multiplier is 2 got it guys so 2 into 2 lakh 50,000 we get 5 lakh 5,000 shares at the rate rupees 100 each we have invested in equity and we have invested the other in debt now the things will move on I will discuss with you case 1 case 2 you can try it on your own now, say for example, share value increases by say 2,50,000 to 7,50,000 rupees. Now, share value is 7,50,000 guys. Share value is 7,50,000. Debenture is uh, 5 lakh. Portfolio value is 2,50,000. Use the same formula. Portfolio value 12,50,000 minus floor value which is 7,50,000. Floor value is already given multiplier is 2 so we will get 10 lakh we will get 10 lakh as the amount to be invested in equity shares now as per the market already the share value is 7 lakh 50 thousand now i want to increase it to 10 lakh so i will introduce the remaining 2.5 lakhs in equity are we understanding guys so yeah so 7.5 lakh shares are already there 2.5 lakh I will add in equity. I will add in equity. So that will make my equity total to how much? 10 lakhs. I already have 5 lakhs in debt. So this the total will become 15 lakh. But I want the portfolio value to be 12.5 lakh. So what I will do is 2.5 lakh debt I will sell. So, equity purchase 2.5 lakh, debt sell 2.5 lakh. Pacha everybody. Are we clear everyone? Guys, very very important. Again, I will explain you. Suppose now, in the first case, share value increase from 5 lakh to 7 lakh 50 thousand. From 5 lakh to 7 lakh 50 thousand. So, increase in share value by rupees 2 lakh 50 thousand. Now, the shares are worth 7 lakh 50 thousand, debenture 5 lakh. So, total portfolio goes to 12 lakh 50 thousand. Using that formula, portfolio value minus floor value into uh, multiplier will give me the investment in shares to 10 lakh rupees. Already current market price of shares is 7 lakh 50 thousand. So can I say add 2.5 lakh in equity shares will do. So total 10 lakh will happen in equity shares. 
plus 5 lakh is already there in debt that we will reduce we will try to ensure that portfolio value remains to be 12.5 so what you will have to do if you have added 2.5 equity shares here 2.5 lakh debt you will have to reduce do the same thing in case 2 and you will be more clear i hope we are on the right track and finally we have the sharpe optimal portfolio this is purely purely based on formula uh, i have given it to you you can just use it because see this this formula is too difficult for me to explain in a revision session nor the chances of this coming in the exam are there just one question is there so we have done just giving you the four steps you can just follow these four steps five steps and you will be able to get it but not really quite to do much here and finally we come to the last formula covariance using beta at times the covariance of a and b is given how do you calculate that covariance it will be beta of a into beta of a into variance of market so if covariance of a b is to be calculated using beta i think rithik used me this question see this is how you are going to do it covariance using beta they will ask you to calculate covariance but they will not give you any risk or any factor they will give you beta of a they will give you beta of b they will give you market variance use them and calculate it for reference you can use icm module question 14 and 17 again one more a good concept covariance of an asset with itself is its variance so covariance of a with a is variance of a and the last is correlation between two stocks can also be represented as r a b can be represented as RAM into RBM. So all these shortcut formulas can be used in, in uh, questions like 14 and 17. With this, I complete all your portfolio questions or your portfolio, I mean concepts. All formulas with the written thing. Let me know if you want this written thing as well. I'll share it with you. Everybody, okay, then so done and dusted with the session. As I've told you all, the fact that you've reached till here, well done. I'm proud of you. Now, ensure that you revise it at least two to three times. I told you all, in case you need the next chapter that you want to decide, share it in the comments. I will take it on priority. And anything else, let me know. Yes. Shalom. Do share how, how did you like the session? How useful it was? And yes, looking forward to many more such sessions. All right, guys. Shalom. Take care. Keep smiling. Thank you so much. Hasta la vista. Have a great time. And the next session is on the way. Cheers.